Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be doing another sewing vlog today. I've got my studio doors open so apologies if you can hear traffic noise. Um, my little studio is at the back of the house so you can probably hear like car noise and stuff. Um, but it's too hot in here to have the door shut. <laughs> um, so today, you might have seen from the title, I'm making a baby nest and it is this pattern from Stoff and Still. Little disclaimer before I start this video, when I shared about baby nests on my Instagram I had a lot of controversial responses and obviously I know not to leave them my baby unattended in a baby nest and this isn't for sleeping overnight this is um, pretty much just something to put them down in you know throughout the day and I'm very aware of the safety precautions to do with SIDS and things like that so I don't need any comments to do with not using them and things like that so if you are here to see how it comes together then hello welcome um, with this baby nest the instructions have been translated from, I'm not actually entirely sure, um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure where they've been translated from, but the English translation, if I'm being completely honest, isn't great. But the instructions are essentially just this section here, and it looks pretty confusing. When I was looking through it, last time I was like I could not get my head around it There's, this kind of has like one long sentence with like three steps in it so it's getting my head around it so I thought I would just vlog for you guys anyone else in the UK or English speaking that wants to make this hopefully I can share a little bit of light on it but I'm also learning on the go because I've not sewn it before um, it does give you some form of like little diagram type illustrations but it's just not the clearest of instructions. I, I like mine very clear cut as if they're written for a child. <laughs> in terms of fabric, I am making this in some really gorgeous cotton. I've got um, a William Morris Willow Print uh, cotton here and then also a Liberty cotton as well. So I'm doing contrasting fabrics, which I thought was quite cute. And then for wadding, I've got um, four layers instead of three layers cut out. It recommends three, but I actually cut out four, so it's nice and squishy. Um, and the wadding I got was not the thickest, so I just thought I'd do four. And then the outer edge, what is confusing, it says part three edge cut once, 120 centimetres by 220 centimetres for the outer edge, which I'm guessing is kind of like rolled um, and placed or like, you know stuffed into the edging um, I'm actually just going to use teddy bear stuffing I've seen it done in another YouTube video um, so teddy bear stuffing is essentially um, what you get inside cushions so if you've got old cushions that you're not using anymore um, you could just recycle the the padding or the wadding inside um, of those cushions or you can buy teddy bear stuffing from like online shops and craft shops and things so I've actually already got a bag of teddy bear stuffing so I was like perfect I'm gonna use wadding in the middle teddy bear stuffing around the edge so yeah in terms of instructions I'm gonna do the first step which is probably the easiest step <laughs> and it's placing your fabrics uh, right sides together and sewing from the bottom notch these little corner bits at the bottom these bits you have a notch in the center of them so you start from that notch and you sew all the way around until you get to the other notch on this side and then you leave this bit open so I'm going to do that and it is a one centimeter seam allowance so that's the most straightforward part of this probably of these instructions knowing it's a one centimeter seam allowance and this first sewing step so i'm going to do that and then we can work out together what the next step is so i've just sewn from notch to notch now the next part of the instruction says to cut small darts in the curve so in these little curved areas and probably at the top as well, just a few, basically when it says cut darts, it basically just means to snip in sort of close to 
the seam without go like the sewing without going into the sewing. So you just want to do a few little snips around the curved edge like that. And I'm going to do that all the way around, um, just mainly just focusing on the curved se uh, sections. And then it says press seam allowance allowances apart. So because you've got this opening at the bottom, you're able to sort of access in there like that, which is going to be handy for the next step as well. Um, so then when it comes to having the notches in there, um, you will open up the seam and just uh, iron that open. Press seam allowances apart and cut into the last stitch. So when it says cut into the last stitch, where you started at your notch, um, I've obviously double um, sewn so that it's nice and secure, you want to cut down to that line as well. So I'm just going to do all of that, get that prepped, and that's that's basically instruction number one done. Um, see what I mean about it being like three different uh, almost instructions as like one sentence. So you've done sewing around the edge one centimetre from notch to notch. Um, you then want to snip into the curved corners. Um, they've named it darts, but basically just snipping into the curved edges and then pressing the seam allowances apart and cutting at the last stitch. This is where the instructions don't make any sense to me. <laughs> Tell me if this makes sense. Stitch on the bias ribbon at the middle of the seam on the front piece with an edge stitching on both sides to make a drawstring hem. Start and finish by folding the end two centimetres, turn inside out. So, this is what I'm gathering from what I've read online. I'm going to turn this the right way, so that the right sides of the fabric are showing. Okay, all of this snipping is done. I have got some bias tape here. Use this one, which is a, um, as far as I remember, a 15 millimeter. Might have been an 18 millimeter. I think it's an 18 actually. 18 millimeter uh, bias tape. Let's get that off. Okay, so I might I might use this one to be honest. It looks a bit safer in terms of thickness. And then I also got this inch, which is definitely going to be too too thick. Um, okay, cool. So what I think you actually have to do is. Once that's all ironed and the uh, seam allowance is opened, you would start your bias tape here, like that, where that opening is. Fold that under two centimetres, which is what they say in the instructions. Place it so that the middle, where your seam allowance or your seam is in the middle of the bias tape and then you edge stitch on either side. So you edge stitch all the way around to the other notch and then the same on the other side. So that you edge, edge stitch closely to the, the bias edging. And then what happens is that creates a channel for your cord to go through. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna try and attempt to do this. I'm gonna iron it and see how I get on and I'll show you. And if that's the case, then it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so I've ironed it I'm now going to top stitch the bias on so I'm going to go ahead and do it it's going to be quite fiddly because you kind of have to do it around the curves and stuff like that um, but I'm going to do it so the right side is facing upwards on the sewing machine so so the corner bit was really hard to do but I'm just going to show you on the straight so we've got that nice and flat make sure the seam allowance is open underneath nice and flat the bias sits on top like that and then we just edge stitch like that. Okay, so just gonna do that all the way around and then do it on both sides, creating that little channel. So step number three is place the three pieces of wadding for the bottom on the top of each other and stitch them together at the edge. So essentially lay your warding pieces together like so and just stitch all the way around. Like I mentioned earlier I've got four layers. Um, hopefully it goes through the machine okay but I'm just going to put this on a slightly longer stitch like a 3.5 or something like that. Um, I'm just going to stitch all the way around the edge just to keep this all together. Um, so yeah so that's step three. Once I've done that, it says place pins through both layers of the fabric 
of the fabric of the bag 13 centimeters from the edge see figure two so that's when we look at that picture um, and that's going to create your encasing for the wadding to go in here and then your teddy bear stuffing to go all the way around so we're going to do those steps now Once the bias tape is on, which it is now, you can see, stitch on both sides, um, laying it out, I say flat, basically as flat as possible, <laughs> um, and I'm measuring 13 centimetres from the edge all the way around and just pinning um, basically at 13 centimetres. The wadding is now sewn together around the edges so it all stays, you know, nicely together. Once that's pinned, you've got the opening at the bottom, so this wadding will then go inside like that, um, and then you pin the wadding through and both layers of fabric at 15 centimeters. So that is all pinned 15 centimeters from the edge, the wadding is inside. So I'm now going to just stitch all the way around where those pins are with the wadding encased within it um, and just to note I have changed it over to my walking foot um, this is a lot easier for things like quilting and stuff like this when there's lots of thick layers so this should help make it nice and even that is now sewn all the way around so what I'm going to do before I stuff the outer ring with teddy bear stuffing I'm actually going to use the safety pin and start threading in the uh, cord. I'm just going to attach the safety pin to the cord and then thread that all the way through. Just it'll be easier while this is like you know lighter fabric and it's not got the stuffing in it to put that cord in now. It doesn't actually mention this in the instructions at all so <laughs> you might want to do it at this stage as well um, before we move on to the next step. So as you can see I'm just going to thread this in. I put a little knot on the end of the cord um, and then put the safety pin through the knot and I'm just sort of placing that through now. So the cord is all the way in, it's all the way around and I reckon I use about four metres. I've just left these long ends which I can cut shorter um, you know later on depending on how much um, it's sort of excess when I've tied it in a bow and stuff and I've just put little knots in the end. I don't know if you can see that, yeah there you go. Um, and this is just a macrame cord that I got on eBay. It was super cheap, I think it's like three pounds for five meters. Um, and now I'm about to stuff the outer edge with my teddy bear stuffing. Hopefully I've got enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and stuff it. And yeah, it's coming together really nicely actually. Um, the instructions aren't as intimidating as I thought. I've kind of just sussed it out really. Um, so once I've stuffed it, it's just a case of um, enclosing the wadding and everything else at the bottom. So my loves, I need to go and attack some cushions inside because I ran out of teddy bear stuffing. <laughs> um, so I've definitely got a couple of cushions I can use that I don't, you know, that are just stored in the cupboard. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then hopefully finish it off and I'll show you um, the next step. Hi guys, it's a new day. and I've just started sewing these bits together. So that's all stuffed. Um, but what I tried to do is get it under the machine and it was so difficult um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to as you can see I got to there and, I, and it was slipping so I'm just going to hand stitch all of this I'm just going to neatly turn it about a centimetre each side and then hand stitch it um, same with all of this as well it might take me a little while but that's absolutely fine and then once that's done um, it will be finished I'll just finish off these little ties because um, they don't need to be this long. Um, so what I'll do is I'll finish it off by hand, just with normal little like stitch, um, and then I'll show you the finished result. Yeah, I think it's looking really cute. And here we have it, you guys, my rather <laughs> lumpy-looking um, baby nest. But overall, I'm super happy with it. 
Um, so a few notes I would say. Firstly, the wadding. Um, if you were doing the wad, uh, the sides with what like rolled up wadding, it would obviously look a lot smoother than the finish that I've got. Um, I am going to sort of like work on it and make sure I try and get some of the lumps out, but I'm not I'm not too fussed. I love the contrast between the fabrics. I think that's worked really well. And um, I don't think I mentioned where they're from. I can't remember the exact name of the brand, but I will leave the link in the description box below for you guys. Uh, she specialises in like Liberty prints and stuff and cotton. So I'll leave that below for you. Um, and then, yeah, the ties worked really nicely. I would say I used about three and a half metres altogether of like bias and... Uh, this kind of macrame rope so hopefully that gives you a good um, indication of how much to use it doesn't actually say in the pattern and then what I would say is actually <laughs> the wadding at the bottom you know I mentioned at the start that it said three layers of wadding and I used four well I'm not sure if it's just the wadding that I got wasn't thick enough or wasn't like firm enough I got like a obviously fairly flexible one as you can see even though I did four layers and it's nice and squishy it's really like you know quite flexible it doesn't really hold its shape which is a little bit frustrating because you kind of want the pod to to hold its shape don't you um but it's not really holding its shape which is quite frustrating so that's what i would say if you're looking for wadding just make sure you're finding one that's like maybe a little bit firmer um i'm not an expert on wadding so i have no idea which is probably why i've got this wrong but yeah, it's just not holding its shape how I would want it because it's meant to really sort of sit like that, you know, with this bit sort of nice and flat. So, but yeah, overall, really happy with it. Um, I think it's really cute. And obviously I can change its side. Might even look nicer this side, you know. Let's have a look. Actually looks a bit better that side, doesn't it? Because um, of the yellow, I think it shows up more of the, the bunches of uh, stuffing. Whereas that's a bit, yeah, a bit better. Obviously, if that was straight. <laughs> um, but anyway, you get the idea. And hopefully my instructions or my kind of insight helped you guys if you're trying to make this for yourself as well. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed it, I um, hope you enjoyed the vlog and seeing how I made the baby pod. <laughs> um, I'm really happy with it actually and considering I made it myself and I didn't really spend a lot of money because um, some of the pods that you can see on the market are like 100 plus you know to buy them and they grow out of them so quickly. So yeah it's just a nice little thing I can say that I made. Um, and just a disclaimer as well, I'm going to sit down actually for this. I just wanted to put a disclaimer at the end as well because I shared a preview of the um, the pod on my Instagram um, last week when I was filming it. I'm just finishing this off in the new week, but um, I had a message from someone and it was basically saying that pods aren't safe and um, to make me aware of safe sleeping and um, and SIDS and stuff like that. And I I know it comes with the territory with one, becoming a mum, and secondly, posting anything to do with your baby or baby things online that you're gonna get uh, opinions and stuff like that. But I do just wanna say at the end of this video that um, I think we all just need to be a bit kinder to everyone because I obviously am never, uh, like, I don't have to justify myself, justify myself, but I'm going to. I wouldn't leave my baby unattended in a pod. I, I'm not silly, um, I, I know about SIDS. We just need to stop giving people unsolicited advice, you know, uh, let people be how they want to be, let people live how they want to live, um, and rude messages and rude comments and stuff like that just don't sit well with me, and I just think um, if if you don't agree with baby pods and things like that, that's absolutely fine. Again, like, I don't have to justify myself, but I won't obviously be using the pod for sleeping at night time. It's purely just to have in the living room if I need to pop my baby down for two minutes, two seconds, whatever. Sorry, my memory card uh, filled up. <laughs> um, so I'll try and keep them <laughs> this little bit short. So yeah, basically, I just want to say, like, I think we need to be each other's cheerleaders. And if you don't agree with something, there's always the option of just not saying anything at all. <laughs> um, I think that's probably the best thing, really, uh, because it can just come across quite patronising. And, and, and unless someone's asked, 
specifically for advice rather than just replying to people that are sharing their their life online with negatives um so that's all i'm going to say on it uh but if you did enjoy the baby pod um tutorial then or vlog then i hope you um found it helpful and it goes without saying that obviously they're not meant to be used for nighttime sleeping if you're unsure of any of that then i'll leave that to you guys to look um into it hopefully this is helpful and thank you so much for watching you guys and i'll see you next time bye